Thank you all so much for, um, for coming today. Um, I am Miranda March, and I am going to be one of your hosts as we go through this conversation and introduction. So hopefully you're all here to hear about the new Medi-Cal Mobile Crisis Services Benefit. If that's what uh, you want to talk about today, you are in the right room. And uh, Danielle, let's go ahead and advance the slides and get into this. So this is just a quick agenda. I'm not going to read it to you because I'm fairly confident that you are all familiar with the form. But if one of your colleagues happens to um, want to just jump in for a um, very, very specific portion of this, you can uh, send them a cheater message and make sure that they step in for the greatest, uh, greatest hits. So um, again, I'm going to assume that you are all familiar with the objective form and not spend time reading these. Um, instead, I am going to um, introduce you to the man of the hour, who is um, Ivan Barjwaj, which I probably just mangled and probably should have practice pronouncing before saying it in front of a bunch of people, but um, he is our friend at DHCS and um, take it away, Ivan. Thank you, Miranda. Honestly, that wasn't too bad. Um, it is Ivan Bardwaj, and I am chief of the uh, Medi-Cal Behavior Health Policy Division within the California Department of Healthcare Services. Um, and I'm responsible for the behavioral health uh, policy and program components of the Drug Medi-Cal, Drug Medi-Cal Organized Delivery System and uh, County Mental Health Plans, as well as 988, uh, the Recovery Incentives Program, and a host of CalAIM initiatives, including uh, the Medi-Cal Peer Support Services Program, and of course, uh, the Medi-Cal Mobile Crisis Benefit, which is why I am here today. So uh, welcome, everyone. I uh, sincerely thank you all for, for joining us today. And this is really the first of many exciting opportunities um, for training and technical assistance uh, to be able to prepare counties and mobile crisis teams for the successful launch of the Medi-Cal Mobile Crisis Benefit. And I'm personally uh, thrilled to be involved in any way um, with this truly innovative initiative, which really serves as a powerful way to address the historic levels of uh, mental health um, and um, SUD related uh, crisis services throughout the state. Uh, I'm going to be um, really, you know, showing some dense slides here, as you'll note in this first slide, and we're not going to cover every little element uh, that's included on them. They're intended really to capture meaningful information and serve as a way to really reference and understand information uh, on the benefit itself after the webinar concludes. So really the slides are intended to serve as kind of a, a living resource um, post webinar as well. Um, but I am a history nerd myself. So I, you know, I thought we could cover a bit of the history of the benefit before we get going in earnest. And um, so in October of uh, last year, we submitted a state plan amendment or SPA, which is linked here and it's available for review on our website. Um, and importantly, the SPA is consistent with CMS guidance on being able to draw down enhanced federal funds for a three-year period from April 2022 through the end of March uh, 2027. Um, and then in December, um, this middle bullet here, we released the Behavioral Health Information Notice uh, 22-064, which is also linked here, and it outlines the requirements uh, for mobile crisis services. I'll speak to that more in just a second. Um, but yeah, you know, as we all know, uh, mobile crisis teams have been historically present throughout the state and have been um, supported through various funding sources, uh, such as the Mental Health Services Act, uh, the Substance Abuse Prevention and Treatment Block Grant, uh, the Community Mental Health Services Block Grant, and other funding sources. Uh, but this is really obviously the first time the state is reimbursing as a distinct benefit, and thus uh, these mobile crisis teams have to meet the specific requirements outlined by CMS and the HCS in order to be able to implement and claim for these services. Um, and you'll note that if, you know, at the bottom here, there is a uh, revised behavioral health information notice uh, that is published on our website and is available for uh, stakeholder feedback um, through the, uh, through Friday, close, uh, by close of business Friday, uh, that's April 21st, and um, encourage feedback to go to county uh, support at dhcs.ca.gov. And I believe one of our slides actually will list um, that uh, link for you. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So I'm pleased to announce the team uh, for MTAC. Uh, and as a reminder, MTAC stands for Medi-Cal Mobile Crisis Training and Technical Assistance Center. 
uh, but MTAC is a lot easier to say, I think. Uh, so we've listed the key principles on this project, uh, but there are a multitude of other team members that are standing this benefit up that aren't listed. These are just the main folks you're most likely to hear from and interact with. Um, so on the DHCS side, we've got Erica Christo, who is the Assistant Deputy Director for Behavioral Health, uh, myself, uh, Ivan, and uh, Antu Bui, who is the, uh, one of our clinical team members and is a psychiatrist. Um, we've also got Casey Heinzen, who is Chief of the Behavioral Health Innovation Branch and overseeing this a little bit more directly. And then we've got Kareem Kammerman, uh, one of our health program specialists, who's been kind of leading large portions of this effort out. Um, and we're pleased to have uh, under contract the Center for Applied Research Solutions, or CARS, um, another easier acronym, uh, to lead out our training and technical assistance efforts. Um, many of you may be familiar with them already, um, but you know they've done a lot of uh, work around uh, the Crisis Care Mobile Units Program um, that's led out by one of our uh, colleague divisions, um, as well as the MHSA-supported Crisis and Recovery Enhancement, or CARE Technical Assistance Center. Um, uh, they're also leading out a host of other initiatives. I struggle to, to name them all, but I'd like to hand it off uh, to our MTAC uh, project director, Miranda March, uh, to help lead out introductions for her team. Hi, it's so great to um, to be here and to see all of you here, or at least uh, see your names here. I actually do see some familiar names from our other initiatives. Um, some of you have worked with us on other projects across the 20 or 25 years we've been doing um, technical assistance and training with the counties in California. So good to um, good to see familiar names and excited to meet the rest of you. Um, we are going to be going into depth about what the uh, TA Center does and um, how it does and for whom it does. But for the moment, I just want to, um, to take a moment to welcome you and introduce myself. As Ivan said, I'm Miranda March. I'm the project director. I am um, ably assisted by Danielle and Andrew, who are the field director and the project manager, respectively. And then we've also got a whole host of people behind us who are um, not only team members, but um, consultants and subject matter experts who we're going to be introducing you to and working with uh, working with you closely over the next 13 months or so. So again, really a pleasure to meet all of you. So a uh, little bit more history, uh, context on um, why mobile crisis services. And to many of you, that's probably self-evident, but I think it's helpful to review from the state's perspective. Um, so one, we obviously want to ensure that crises uh, episodes are being rapidly addressed, um, that we're providing relief as quickly as possible, and when possible, resolving uh, the crisis episodes um, in question. And kind of the other key part we want to um, ensure is really we're meeting community members where they are. Uh, we know that successful interventions within behavioral health are meeting clients where they are, but this is really, it really takes it to a literal level where we are meeting them physically in their communities where they are as well. Um, so uh, that's that's really critical. And we're also, um, you know, wanting to ensure that we're connecting individuals with services and supports after the encounter as appropriate. And um, that, you know, those uh, individuals are getting the appropriate level of services as well. And lastly, uh, and really importantly, is that we are targeted in how we approach crisis episodes and avoid unnecessary use of other resources that may not be appropriate, uh, like law enforcement, emergency departments, and uh, of course, hospitalization. Next slide, please. So as uh, many of you have gathered, we consider Mobile Crisis Center Medi-Cal to be one of the key components uh, of a full continuum of, uh, of crisis services. Um, they, you know, these are distinct with separate billing codes and a bundled encounter rate. Um, and you know, counties are required to have multidisciplinary mobile crisis teams that are available 24-7, 365 days per year. Uh, and most counties will begin implementing the benefit by December 31st um, of, of this year, um, but or, more information will be uh, uh, available in just a second uh, in what I mean by most counties. Um, and lastly, as I, as I noted earlier, DHCS just published a behavioral health information notice outlining the requirements um, for mobile, the mobile crisis benefit. Uh, we did that in December of 2022. 
And um, we, as I said just a second ago, we, we did revise, uh, publish a revised behavioral health information notice on April 11th that essentially introduces uh, minor changes to the implementation timeline for some counties and includes other uh, minor uh, policy changes. And um, we also have um, just another two days for the feedback. And yep, I was right. The, uh, county support at dhcs.ca.gov uh, inbox is listed here. So that's where um, feedback for that uh, behavioral health information notice would be submitted to. Next slide, please. So um, let's start with the service components of mobile crisis teams. Uh, I do want to call out that mobile crisis teams must be capable of delivering all of these components, uh, which are uh, crisis assessment, um, mobile crisis response, crisis planning, facilitation of a warm handoff, referrals to ongoing supports, and follow-up check-ins. And uh, the team structure also um, has to include two or more behavioral health providers. And we encourage, as a best practice, uh, incorporating peers or community health workers as at least one of the two um, uh, team members. And as I noted, uh, services have to be available 24-7, 365 days per year, uh, and teams have to be able to respond timely to individuals experiencing um, a crisis episode. Um, you know, they, they also have to be uh, delivered outside of a hospital or other facility-based setting and must be delivered in communities um, where the expectation is that these mobile crisis teams have essentially uh, established relationships with community partners that are relevant to supporting mobile crisis services and follow-up supports. And uh, lastly, and this is kind of one of the key aspects of the training and technical assistance, is just ensuring that mobile crisis teams uh, meet the required core training elements. Next slide, please. So uh, let's take a, key, uh, a look at the uh, key implementation milestones for the benefit. Um, there is an attestation process, which basically provides a mechanism to attest to meeting some of the minimum requirements. It's a fairly straightforward uh, form, and it's really intended to be um, not burdensome at all. Um, we have it available on our website, um, but it will be receiving updates to align with the updated behavioral health information notice. Um, and MTAC will be providing training and uh, technical assistance. And um, as, as you all know, this is the start of it. Uh, these trainings will be forthcoming over the next few weeks and months. Uh, and the MTAC team will be discussing that a little bit more um, later on. And uh, as I stated previously, uh, most counties will be delivering services under Medi-Cal by December 31st, 2023. And uh, we'll need to complete the implementation process, which includes approval of a mobile crisis implementation plan uh, and at the station or completion of the required core trainings. And then lastly here, um, the, there will be a select small uh, rural counties that um, will begin delivering services under Medi-Cal by June 30th, 2024. They're listed here really in small print. Um, and they include, uh, if, you're, if you can't see them, they're Alpine, Amador, Del Norte, uh, Glen, Inyo, uh, Mariposa, Modoc, Mono, Apumas, Sierra, and Trinity. Next slide. So going into the attestation process in a little bit more detail, um, this is really part of an expedited implementation process and uh, at a high level um, is as follows. Um, essentially, uh, programs have to submit a completed attestation template, uh, which is again, enclosure one to the behavioral health information notice. And what they're attesting to is really being able to meet the core training requirements or really actually meeting the core training requirements and competencies that would have been received through other comparable trainings from another source. And if approved, um, those counties would not be required to complete the core uh, MTAC trainings. So these um, attestations will be available to be submitted on an ongoing basis. Um, again, it's, it's uh, posted on our website, will be updated um, shortly. Um, and then another requirement um, is the Mobile Crisis Services Implementation Plan, which is due to DHCS by October 31st, 2023. And I'll go into that more uh, in more detail in a couple of slides here. And uh, also, I just want to call out that the attestation process was designed for existing mobile crisis programs that staff multidisciplinary uh, multi teams, um, uh, two-person teams, and not co-response uh, programs where you know law enforcement and companies, a mental health provider or a crisis intervention team, uh, where law enforcement is specifically trained on uh, crisis response. Next slide. So going into the uh, standard mobile crisis implementation process, 
Um, as stated here, most counties will be required to go through this process in advance of Medi-Cal billing for these services. Um, counties have to staff or contract with mobile crisis teams that meet the requirements for core staffing. Um, counties really have to ensure that the core MTAC uh, trainings are completed. And I don't think we've highlighted what those strategies include, but they are uh, crisis intervention and de-escalation, harm reduction, delivering trauma-informed care, conducting a crisis assessment and development of a crisis safety plan. So those are the, the core uh, trainings. Uh, and then there's the crisis services implementation plan. Again, that's due by October 31st. And I'll go into that here, I think in the next slide. Yep. Uh, so uh, the implementation plan is a required component um, of, uh, of the benefit, and MTAC is in the process of developing um, a template for the implementation plan, and uh, we'll be providing um, technical assistance services as counties get in the work of the work of developing their plans. Um, and the required components of the implementation plan uh, include information on each county, and we kind of have it all listed here, but I'll, I'll read them out. Uh, mobile crisis uh, services provider network, coordination strategies across the county's mental health plan and DMC, DMC, ODS uh, delivery systems, uh, participation of mobile crisis teams in um, required training, uh, dispatch policies and procedures, including an identified mobile crisis services hotline and standardized dispatch tool, crisis assessment tool, uh, plans to coordinate with community partners, um, especially uh, law enforcement, policies and procedures for transportation and oversight, um, mechanisms around ensuring culturally responsive and accessible care, and then strategies for responding uh, to children and youth. Um, and uh, let's go ahead into the next slide. Uh, so, um, you know, I, I think with that, I'm going to hand it off to our MTAC team colleagues and let Miranda and team run the rest of the show here. I do have to drop off, but I want to sincerely just thank everyone again for your participation today and highlight um, how excited we are at the ATS to be launching this benefit and being able to support implementation um, and the delivery of services um, through the training and technical assistance that will be provided by MTAC. So uh, we are here to support you and thank you again. All right, so for those of you who um, are not familiar with uh, training and technical assistance, I am pleased to say that um, you're gonna love it. Um, we're gonna be working together really closely over the next 13 or so months. And our sole mandate is to make sure that you are able to complete an implementation plan and then even more excitingly, actually implement the new Medi-Cal mobile crisis response benefit so that's our job is to work with you to make sure that you have all of the supports that you need to make that happen. Um, we are going to offer you a mix of what we call proactive and reactive um, supports and services. And what I mean by that is that there is some um, some stuff that is um, that we will be putting putting out there in terms of training and resources that is defined by DHCS. So Danielle just put the topics for the core trainings in the uh, in the chat. So um, so those we will be offering to you. So those are some of the things that you know we and DHCS and the stakeholders and the counties and all the people that have come together to talk about this mobile crisis benefit um, think that the counties need. And then there's also the reactive part where it turns out that we don't know everything about you. We maybe don't even know most things about what you need. So we're really eager to hear from you what it is that you need in order to implement this benefit. So you're going to have lots of opportunities to give us feedback about that um, on not only the topics, but the ways that you like to learn. Um, I myself am what I call a dense narrative learner. So if you want me to learn something, please give it to me in the form of dense narrative. Um, but I bet a lot of you like to learn through conversation or like to learn um, on your own time through online courses or um, would rather have you know small group conversations with either our team or um, or other kinds of consultants and experts so all of these things are going to be made available to you so we have already talked a little bit about the core training modules so um, these are the topics again um, they are going to be offered virtually. So, so let me back up. My guess is that what people really want to know is when are they happening, who has to go there, and how do you keep track of whether or not I've done it? 
So, um, so to that, I will say yes. So these four, five, sorry, five core modules are required for um, before each county can implement the mobile crisis response benefit. So you will need to take them. Um, it is the folks who are on the mobile crisis response teams, as well as their supervisors. So anybody who is directly involved in delivering um, mobile crisis benefits. So that's clinicians, peers, paraprofessionals, and their supervisors will need to take these five core trainings. Um, we're gonna start rolling them out next month, and then they will keep rolling out through the spring and summer. Um, they will be offered virtually um, and then also archived and made available on the website, on the project website, which is so, so close to launching and it looks awesome. So thanks to our web developer who's not here, but you will be able to access them online as well. Um, we are talking with DHCS about the possibilities of trying to create these modules in other formats. So whether that's um, in, in person or as an online course, um, that's still to be determined. But at the very least, they will be um, available as distance learning opportunities and then accessible 24-7 to your teams. Um, and I am going to break my own rule and say, um, I see in the chat that the question is uh, whether it's going to be on our website or the DHCS website, and it will be on our website, which is not quite live yet, but is so close. And as soon as it is live, we will um, we will absolutely share that out with you. Um, in the meantime, we're continuing to put our email address in the chat. That's the project email. So um, if you email the that, uh, that address, somebody will, a real life person will receive it from this team and we can add you to our distribution list and be in touch with you about all the amazing things that are gonna come out of this project. Um, in addition to the, to the five required core modules, we're also gonna be offering a number of enhanced and implementation opportunities. So these are these are not required, but they are highly encouraged. We hope um, that in the process of hearing from you about what it is that you need to successfully implement this benefit, um, what it is that your teams need to feel confident about the implementation, um, what your teams need to understand sort of the new theories and frameworks that are informing the, um, the new approach to mobile crisis response that we can create training opportunities and resources that are really relevant directly for you and your teams. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Danielle, now that we've gone through some of the nuts and bolts about what the trainings are, um, for whom they are, um, when they are. I'm going to turn it to Danielle, who's going to talk to us, going to take a step back and talk about why they are. So why, why are we doing it in this new way? And so, Danielle, I'm turning it to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much again for being here with us. Um, you know, I really appreciate you taking time out of your very busy schedules. I know for some of you, this was very last minute. So again, we apologize for that. And but we really do appreciate you taking the time to be here with us and to really just sit here and listen um, and engage with us um, in a way that is hopefully productive and helpful to you all. Um, I, I also notice, um, recognize many of the names here. So I'm really excited to see all of you again. Um, I know we've we've been in shared meeting spaces before and had some really great conversations around mobile crisis services and the, the different directions and, and how we want to enhance and provide the best support to our community. So I'm just so excited to, to be here again with you and sharing space with you all. Um, my name is Danielle Ragib. I am a, a TTA training and technical assistant specialist um, with the Center for Applied Research Solutions, and I'm on the MTAC team. Um, I'm just going to speak a little briefly on the new direction for mobile crisis services. Um, as we know, for the past several years, we have seen lots of new standards and best practices that are really data driven um, come out around mobile crisis response across the country and here in California. Um, with really wanting to enhance crisis care across that crisis care continuum. So making sure that um, all of, you know, anyone coming into crisis services at any point across that continuum, that they're getting the best care possible that really is customized for their own needs and, and what would work best for them. Um, these efforts are really to support communities and those in crisis as much as possible, and really to reduce the amount of time that they go back into crisis, right? We see that a lot in our communities. 
Um, and so with this new benefit and this new kind of direction that mobile crisis service is going in, the really overall change in mobile crisis service um, is to really have a more solution focused brief intervention model that really focuses on providing relief to people in crisis who are in the community. Um, we, we all know that we always we always want to aim to support people um, when they're in crisis to really meet them where they're at and try to use the least restrictive means necessary. Um, and that includes, you know, interventions as well. This new enhanced federal match that applies to this benefit really focuses on this overall change and transformation in, in uh, mobile crisis services. Um, as you know, we kind of talked a little bit about, Miranda talked a little bit about the core trainings. Um, we wanna be able to see those these, these kind of new directions and this transformation in crisis care represented in the trainings that we provide you. Um, mobile crisis response services really should be um, person-centered. Um, you know, there's this core, it, and person-centered means a core belief that focuses on the needs of each person and that they are customized to that person and whatever supports they might need. Um, and, and that the services are trauma-informed. So understanding how trauma impacts our communities and people in crisis, right? It's that shift from what is wrong with you to what happened to you. Um, Equity-driven, of course, allowing for adju adjustments when there are imbalances and providing quality services to all. Um, and really, again, focusing back to that brief intervention, de-escalation, and resolution focus. When we when we approach someone in crisis in the community, we really want to have these models available to really provide relief. Um, and working from a lens, again, that is the least restrictive in terms of means and interventions. And as always, um, really being culturally competent, linguistically appropriate, and accessible for all. That includes children, um, individuals with developmental and disability. Um, intellectual disabilities and um, LGBTQ plus population, uh, rural po populations, tribal communities. There are so many different communities that we have to really kind of shift our lens to work with and work with in the best way possible and to provide the, the most amount of support. All right, again, um, the MTAC team, the Medical Mobile Crisis TA Center, um, we are really here to collaborate. Um, you know best what you need and what will work best for your communities and, and working towards implementation of this benefit. So our goal and our intention is to really work collaboratively with all of you um, to develop any, any training, standardized tools, um, and, and, and so forth. And so our plan and our goal is to have ongoing monthly meetings with counties to gather information and tell us what you need. Um, these these uh, ongoing monthly meetings will be calendared and appropriate notifications and signups will go out. Um, we don't have a date and time yet, but that will be coming soon. Um, those That information will be available on the MTAC website as well um, once it goes live and then also sent out um, through the contact list and distribution list. Um, we will be having the first ongoing monthly meeting. We'll, we will ask that you all bring any crisis assessment tools that you might have and any triage and dispatch tools that you might have in terms of a standardized tool that you and your teams use across your county, um, just so that we can really start to gather what teams are doing out there, what they're using, what's working for them, what's not. Um, again, because we want to be able to provide tools to you that are relevant and useful. Again, the MTAC website is coming soon. There will be lots of new exciting information on the website, as well as things we've covered today. Um, you'll have a meet the team section where you can meet all of us and see our photo, um, kind of face to name thing. You can also request training and technical assistance through the website. There will be a TTA form, um, request form, and so you can easily access that and submit your request. Any announcement and reg registration links for any upcoming, upcoming trainings and webinars will be listed. Um, all any resources that we have for um, implementation of this benefit or relevancy to this benefit will also be available. There will also be a place to submit your attestations and implementation plans, um, and that is all coming soon. What's next? So in May, we will have a webinar on transforming the crisis care experience in California. This webinar really will kind of speak to the new direction that I spoke to briefly. It will speak more to that in, in terms of like core competencies and what we're, what this benefit is really looking for in terms of crisis, uh, mobile crisis response services. Uh, the first core training will be the crisis assessment training and we are hoping to um, kick that off next month. 
Uh, again, we will have those monthly office hours with the MTAC team um, and county. So that ongoing monthly meeting to really collaborate and, and share and hear feedback in regards to relevancy of content needed and, and support needed. Um, again, please bring your crisis assessment tools. And if you have any triage and dispatch tools at that meeting, we will be sending this information out again in case you forget. So you don't have to remember that now. We will also be um, putting out a county TA survey, really trying to, I know we have survey fatigue and you know sometimes surveys aren't the funnest things to do, but this will really help guide us in terms of providing um, the support that you need. And so that will be coming soon as well. That will be available on the website and we will send it out. Um, and we will get that out to you all so that we can really gauge what is needed out in the field. If you have any questions, um, you, you feel free to go ahead and utilize the Q&A function here today. You can also email us any questions at mobilecrisisinfo at cars-rp.org. That is the project um, email and you can reach us there. And thank you, everybody, for um, for bearing with us um, through a whirlwind tour through a lot of information. And I just want to reiterate what Danielle said, which is that this information will be provided to you in multiple different formats, um, including this PowerPoint, a handout, um, upcoming announcements. So um, nobody is expected to absorb um, this uh, quick romp through um, through the mobile crisis benefit in one sitting. Um, I did, um, as promised, keep track of the questions that were asked. There were only a few of them. And I'm going to take the easiest one first, which is that somebody asked if um, the tools that we are asking counties to share with us will be housed in a available for other counties on the project website? And the answer to that is an enthusiastic yes. Um, part of what we would like to um, be able to provide for the counties is, uh, is a census of tools that counties are currently using. Um, we have no desire to come in and say, okay, you know, we have figured out the best tool to do this crisis response thing, and now you must all use this exact tool but to really work with the counties to figure out what's working um, for each of them and what we can put forth the some recommended best practices. Um, we're also um, in that same vein, hoping to start a monthly office hour for counties. And so this, the idea here is that we would have, you know, whatever it is, the third Thursday of, uh, of every month, an hour set aside for county representatives to come together with the TA team to workshop um, what the what the needs are and what uh, what the expectations are. So, for example, we might have the first one be to collectively review those crisis assessment instruments. Um, but we're you know we're trying to navigate uh, two things at once, which is the you know in all transparency the need to get these trainings out quickly so that you can all take the trainings that you need to take in order to implement the mobile crisis response benefit and also to not come in and say, you know, okay, here's the new way we're doing things. So, you know, so we, you know, you guys are the experts in how this works. So we're threading a needle between moving quickly and also moving responsively. And so we're hoping that uh, we can have broad participation in those meetings so that all of our stakeholders have a chance to, um, to tell us what's working and what's not. So there will be more information about that coming soon. We'll try to work with um, all y'all figure out a, uh, a time that uh, is feasible for the most number of people. And that has taken me completely off track from the um, from the questions, which I will now return to. Um, we were also asked, um, would other crisis continuum partners such as law enforcement also be able to participate in the trainings? Um, and from, from my perspective, um, yes. They, um, they, you know, the trainings will be open to um, will be open to to all. But just to reiterate that the expectation is that the um, the mobile crisis teams that are responding in this um, in this new way of of doing things will include two behavioral health providers, inclusive of clinician um, and or a peer and or a paraprofessional, and that the goal is to reduce reliance on law enforcement. But I'll pause and see if the, uh, the anyone from the DHCS side would like to weigh in. All right. 
So we do also have an answer to the final question that was posed, which is what is considered a timely response, which is an excellent question. Um, I am going to uh, send that. I'm still um, still experimenting with the Q&A functions. I'm not sure if uh, folks are able to see that, but I'm also going to read that out loud because I know that there are some people who have only joined by phone. So, um, so in case I am not uh, completely clear or I mumble or you can't remember everything I am about to say, um, it's it's part of the um, the new bin that was posted on. Um, it's located on page twenty. So, in terms of response times, um, the rule is that mobile crisis teams shall arrive at the community-based location where a crisis occurs in a timely manner. Um, specifically, mobile crisis teams shall arrive within 60 minutes of the beneficiary being determined to require mobile crisis services in urban areas and within 120 minutes of the beneficiary being determined to require mobile crisis services in rural areas. Um, and we're also noting that timeliness standards are not included in network adequacy requirements or certification, and DHCS will provide ongoing technical assistance to Medi-Cal behavioral health delivery systems regarding the response times. So again, that is uh, that is all available in the in the bin on page twenty. I think we we answered um, most of the questions that we anticipated being asked through um, through the. Uh, through the um, the course of events, which you know, again, we were uh, we were talking about what we thought counties would want to know, but um, we can spend a little more time with that. I did see Maria, your question in regards to who should attend the webinar and core trainings um, around uh, the core trainings and and webinar in May. Um, and who cannot attend. Um, DHS has said that they will take that question back and um, just so that they ensure that they have more of a consistent policy um, for the duration of the project. So that question will be answered at a later time. Again, you know, the um, the questions that uh, that we'd like to just be really clear um, that, yes, the um, the core trainings are mandatory and are required to be completed as part of the eligibility to implement the new Medi-Cal mobile crisis benefit um, and that DHCS in partnership with CARS will provide optional enhanced trainings for counties. Again, there's an opportunity for you to, um, to let us know what topics and what modalities you'd like to see in those enhanced trainings. Um, we have some that we will definitely be bringing to you, but we want to be responsive um, to your needs. We want to um, let you know that, uh, again, we're currently in the development phase of the core trainings. Um, so all the training uh, dates and times and registration links will be posted on the project website as soon as it's live. And we'll also be sending them out um, through the constant contact email announcements, some of which uh, some of you received those for this meeting. So more to uh, more to come. Um, we um, were looking to roll out the first uh, core training on crisis assessment at the uh, probably at the end of May. We've got a webinar coming up that is um, not required, but is going to serve as a good prerequisite for um, for the crisis assessment training. We're working with one of our um, one of our core uh, consultants who has really um, been doing this work for a long, long time, and she's got a lot of good perspective to bring on how we can reorient ourselves to this new way of doing mobile crisis response. Um, so you saw in the uh, in the slides that that's scheduled for May 16th, and we'll be sending out registration and um, information about that. So hope to see you all there. Um, the enhanced trainings and the implementation trainings are going to be rolled out over the summer and into into the fall. Um, in terms of the core trainings, we're hoping to see all mobile response providers, all mobile crisis response providers, so clear clinicians, peer supporters, specialists, paraprofessionals, and the supervisors. So all the folks who interact with, uh, with mobile crisis response in the field or supervise those folks, um, we, will, we will be seeing you. Um, again, if for some reason, members of your team, well, I'm not going to say for some reason, because it is actually literally impossible to have every single person who is required to take these trainings in one place at one time. So um, so do not fear. We uh, we think 
people will get the most out of them if they're able to come and participate in the interactive components that will be integrated into these trainings. But if they are not able to, we will be hosting them on the project website and you can access them and get a certificate of completion. Um, we will be tracking participation across um, all modalities and sharing that with DHCS so that we know who has been trained, who's meeting the requirements. Um, so that uh, that is on our plate. We talked a little bit about the attestation process in the um, in the during the the webinar. We um, and these slides will be sent. But essentially, you know, you um, you can submit an attestation if you have uh, confidence that everything that uh, was covered in these trainings are something that your full team has already been trained in. So, um, so you can look at the uh, at the bin. Um, there are detailed requirements uh, that counties must meet. And if um, if you feel like you have met those requirements that all members of your team have uh, been trained and the core competencies identified for each of the core training modules, then you are invited to um, to submit an attestation, it's a hard word to say, attestation demonstrating that. Um, <clears throat> we on the, uh, on the TA side are in the process of um, drafting the attestation format. So what you would need to show for whom and in what level of detail. So we will be sharing that back out with the counties, but broadly speaking, um, you know, you should have um, competencies in brief intervention, de-escalation and resolution, um, and also be oriented towards the least restrictive interventions. <clears throat> So, you know, so the kind of things that we'll be asking about are, you know, uh, certificates of completion for your team in terms of those prior trainings, and then some level of detail about what the training covered, you know, whether that's an agenda or a flyer, or um, we're still working on that, but we'll also need to, uh, to see that we can, um, that, you know, that, that, that it covered the core competencies. <clears throat> Um, given that we have uh, we've talked about uh, the implementation readiness assessment a great deal, I'm guessing folks would like to know when that uh, when that will hit their desks. Um, again, that's uh, that's going to be released shortly. Um, we are um, we have a meeting on Monday to review the initial draft of that. So we will be releasing that as soon as it's finalized with our partners at DHCS. Um, we will be housing that on the website and you'll be able to submit both the um, your implementation plan or your attestation through the website. Um, so those were those were the key points that we wanted to hit home to really make sure that uh, that folks understood. Um, ask the uh, the DHCS team if uh, if there was anything else that they wanted to make sure was addressed before we move on to um, to the next thing. So I am going to thank everybody for their time. And um, we look forward to working with all of you over the next uh, year plus and hope you enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>